Many of you ask, how can we fight back against the criminals? How can we have an advantage against naked short sellers? I think it's very simple. You have to think outside the box. You cannot play by their rules. So what we saw in an article dropped today, Genius Group names ex-FBI official to head task force to investigate illegal trading of stock and to pay out a dividend. So what we see here is Genius Group and the board of directors, they met on Wednesday, the 18th, and had an action plan to address illegal naked short selling of its stock. Okay, And they put together this task force regulators and they had timothy murphy a genius group director and former deputy director of the fbi richard berman also a genius group director and a chair of the company's audit committee and roger hamilton who we've been seeing on twitter he's been very active in the past week i believe live with charles Payne. he is the ceo of genius group okay so they're in communication with the government regulatory authorities uh, which we know, you know, has not been very helpful in the past. Um, but the key here is what we've mentioned in the past with, you know, CRTD, GTI, Finger Motion, COSM, you know, right here, Warsaw, Burstein, Christian Levin, and Share Intel. This is West Christian, and this is also the heavy hitters we see at Warsaw, Burstein. Okay, these are guys that know exactly what they're doing. They have experience. They've won cases pertaining to this uh, specific, you know, action which they're trying to take so you know when i say that you know these are the best or the top individuals here i mean it there is really no other group of individuals that are going to have a better chance of fighting back so what they want to do and what i've been saying for a long time is issuing the special dividend to all their shareholders which management believes will help expose those who may have been participating in market manipulation relating to the company's ordinary shares okay it's really important is to one have the ability to do so and second have the ability to do so you know without any sort of disturbance right i believe it's a company's right to have this ability it's a ceo or executive's right to fight back for his company okay ceo jeremy frommer said it's a fiduciary responsibility okay he has accountability and is owning up that that is his job right he is entitled to fight back for the people that are that own a piece of his company OK, most of these CEOs, they don't even feel that way. You know, you talk to AMC, the GMEs, you know, the Ryan Cohen's, they don't have that fiduciary responsibility. They don't believe that in the end of the day. They can't fight back for you. OK, so how is it with a penny stock company or stocks that are sub a dollar? How are they coming together and figuring out? Because they know the real steps it's going to take. They know what has to be done. OK, it's not the big board guys. It's not these Harvard grads that don't want to listen. OK, these are the people you want fighting for you. So, you know, this is not going to happen overnight. This is a long, drawn out process. OK, there's a lot of, you know, bureaucracy involved and that takes time. Right. You have lawsuits. You have to gather evidence. It's not just always what you know in a court of law. It's what you can prove. So that's really difficult. OK, so what they say is management beliefs can make market manipulation by illegal naked short selling more difficult. So that is the point of, you know, uplisting to something like, you know, an exchange offshore like upstream, right, where it doesn't allow the selling of its issuer securities. Right. It's other things that we have, like the special dividend, something that a short seller or in this case, an illegal naked short seller could not provide. OK, so, you know, going through this, you know, they obviously believe that they're in violation of the market rules and this is what they're trying to do to fight back. So I love it. But this is only step one of the puzzle here. I want to talk also about the launching of the Trader Activist Community CEO block, which we know was started by CRTD's Jeremy Frommer. They've been talking a lot about this. I think it's a fantastic idea. It's basically gathering all the executives to come together to share their ideas, to use their Wall Street experience and fight back. This is, again, like I said, is it going to ever just be a very simple an easy solution? No. Is it ever just going to be a quick snap of the fingers overnight solution? No, that's not how this works. Okay, this takes time. But in terms of who is going to have the best odds or the best chances of winning and actually successfully fighting back, I think you see it right in front of your face here. So Again, uh, we see here that they're trying to combat naked short selling and other abusive trading practices. 
pervading the capital market ecosystem. So this is really awesome. You know, I, I think that a lot of CEOs should reach out and get involved with this. I think it's always better to have, you know, five, 10, 15 brains together instead of just one. Okay. The more brain power, the more experience, the more connections, you know, sort of fighting arm in arm. I think you have a greater chance of being successful. And when you go more in depth in here, you know, they want to put an end to naked short selling. They're being so direct right in front of your face. Okay. And let's check out the case here. So illegal naked short selling is the biggest risk to the health of today's public markets. How is it happening? I really do believe this. Okay. When you short a stock, you borrow shares that someone else owns, sell them and wait for the stock price to drop. You then buy the shares back at a lower price, return them to their owner and profit from the difference. So the same way how if we went long on a stock, we buy a stock at a dollar, it goes to $2, we made 100% or we made $1 per share. If the stock is sold short at $2 and goes down to a dollar, you then buy it back at a dollar and then you make that difference on the way down. It's the opposite of going long, okay? But what if you didn't bother to borrow the shares first and you sold them with the promise that you would deliver them soon? The shares you sold are naked shorts, means you don't actually own anything. Wall Street traders have the ability to sell naked short repeatedly, effectively counterfeiting shares that flood the market with excess supply. This is what I mean by when you diluting or synthetically you know, expanding the float of a, a ticker. Okay, this is exactly it here. Okay, this allows them to manipulate the stock price, right? So imagine like Lamborghini, for example, you know, they're so rare because there's only 50 of a certain model and they're very expensive. But what would happen if you woke up the next day and that same car that's only numbered one through 50 is now numbered one to 5 million? Okay, well, that car is going to be valued significantly less because more people have the ability to buy it, right? There's less scarcity or there's less amount of supply. That's why it's worth more. So this is exactly what they do. They manipulate the stock price. They dilute the shares um, and it actually kills the price, right? So eventually short sellers are supposed to purchase shares to fulfill the sales they want made. But if the price is quote unquote too high, Wall Street traders can choose to fail to deliver shares and set a new delivery date using regulatory loopholes. And we see this all the time with AMC and Ape stock. You know, there's hundreds of millions of FTDs that they never actually have to provide. Why? Because we live in a system that's incentivized to do so. It gets more business by doing that. The market makers and relationship with the broker dealers is very strong. So that prime broker is not going to force a, a small market maker, is not going to force one of their clients to actually provide and deliver. Because one, they don't have to. They just take a small fine. And especially if it's a large position size, they much rather have more business by being more lenient, by actually, like we said, incentivizing or favoring their clients even if that means it's screwing over the shareholders or other investors or anyone that's long in the stock. Sometimes Wall Street traders will intentionally fail to deliver and continue to naked short sell a stock and attempt to drive the price down lower and lower. We see this so many times. Uh, I can name a million different stocks that, that have done this, and it's insane. This can go on for years at a time with the end goal being to drive the business into bankruptcy so that the trader never has to purchase the shares they've already sold and can keep all of that money tax free. So the federal government does not recognize naked short selling, especially if the company goes bankrupt. Why? Because you are selling something with the intentions of buying it back. The company goes to zero. It is bankrupt. Well, it doesn't recognize that as a transaction. So you're not paying taxes on something because you never have to buy it back, goes to zero. So that is the end goal of naked short sellers. That's why they say shorts never cover. They never have, that's never part of their plan is to actually buy back. Their plan is to just keep driving the stock lower and lower and lower and lower until eventually the company just bellies up and that's it. They don't have to pay any taxes. We see that with like Sears or Macy's or Fortune or Century 21, Toys R Us. There's a multitude of different tickers that have been victimized by this, you know, nasty, toxic lending and, and just disgusting practices that we see from short sellers. Okay. This predatory naked short selling, and it's currently running rampant in our markets. Okay. So this was an incredible, you know, rundown here from CEO block. And we see now part of the timeline here is 
we see from 1609 all the way down and, and i'm not going to you know take you all through this i'll just go through it very quickly you can you know go and look yourself but we see all these loopholes we see the uptick rule you know there's so many things that have happened over the past hundred years and really you know especially i would say at least since the 1970s where we saw forbes posted that article on naked short selling so this has been around way longer than i've even been alive way longer than i have even been a thought on this earth and many people probably watching this video as well so that is the the point is that people that have wall street experience know how long this has been going on the regulatory bodies know how long this has been going on we've seen it and it hasn't gone away so we have to do something and it's not about crying it's not about complaining it's not about you know just whining and and oh there's nothing we can do and boohoo us no you have to keep fighting it doesn't matter if it takes another year five years ten years you, know, you have to put your foot down and you have to start fighting dirty the same way they do so that's getting everyone involved that's reaching out to a lot of you know higher up people like we said the kathy woods and the arc funds the elon musks you know trying to get you know the biggest names in the game because guess what they're the ones that are actually affected the most by this Tesla was one of the most shorted companies in 2022, the most profitable short company in 2022. And guess what? Kathy Wood's fund has Tesla as its highest percentage of, of its ARC fund. It's the largest holding. So these people don't even get it. You know, they're, they're, they're talking about things that don't even matter. You know, it doesn't matter about the fundamentals or the revenues or, or anything like that behind the scenes. If you have these practices here that are destroying or essentially holding the company's value down. OK, and we see that with companies like Bluebird, right, or CVM, right, head and neck cancer, six to 12 month life increase for head and neck cancer. And they're destroying the stock. I mean, what would you do for an extra six to 12 months of life? Some people would kill for that. If it was money, they'd do any by any means necessary to get that money. Okay. So this is just a whole different level of thinking. Okay. This is our system. Our system is designed to screw the retail investor. So going through the end of this timeline, you know, we see Occupy Wall Street. Uh, so many different finds here with Merrill Lynch. We saw the Overstock and Patrick Byrne, uh, Martin Shrecky. Uh, there was just so many uh, things, Dole Foods. I mean, this is really awesome here. But the fines don't add up, okay? We saw Robin Hood, even especially back in 2021. The only time they stop trading or they stop the purchasing of shares is when they know they have lost right? When they know that they are down bad, that was the only time. Okay. And that's the last part I'm going to wrap this video up with is the market makers or, or specifically, I should say really the brokers here. They never say no, whether it's to the market maker relationship or whether it's to the retail investor, they never say no, we won't take your money or no, you can't buy the stock. It's very rare that you actually hear, no, 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 you cannot buy, buy the ticker anymore. We have to stop the, the, the buying or the purchasing of stock and securities. The only time they've done that we seen or where they halted or where they regulated a stock was when they know they lost, whether it was the shorting, for example, they weren't actually providing. That's when we saw Vlad got that $3 billion margin call in the middle of the night, because guess what? The, the shares that they claim they had that were in their retail uh, accounts, they actually didn't provide or deliver on the back end. So that was something that was very significant. Okay. Um, and that leads us really into the end of the video where they're not delivering. So we're trying to find that solution, which we believe is going to be rooted in a special dividend. But really, uh, I give big credit to CEO Block, Jeremy Frommer, CRTD. This is an incredible breakdown. The case, the timeline, everything was fantastic. Very well put um, and, and designed here. So this is it. This is the markets that we're living in. You have to accept the reality here. Don't think anyone here is going to save you. No one is, is actually trying to fight back besides the executives, besides the retail investors. It's not the regulatory bodies. It's not the SEC. It's not the DOJ. None of them. Okay. We know Gary Gensler is a joke. He will not do anything because he can't. 
So we're going to have to take it into our own hands, but that is no problem. I'm willing to fight tooth and nail until the end. I told you I'm not going to back down until history is made, until we see the change that we want in our capital markets. So that has been my deep dive. I hope genius and and they have a great success with this ex-FBI director here. I hope they really drop the hammer on these guys because enough's enough. And we saw that short sellers profited over $300 billion dollars in 2022 so that is absolutely insane so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you learned a little bit in this video and as always we'll see you in the next one